Susan Frank, I am so excited to be here and to see you. Oh, thank you so much. What a privilege it is to have you here. Thanks. Welcome to the original Round Top Antiques Fair at the Big Red Barn Event Center. We are the show that started everything in Round Top 53 years ago. That's really exciting and I'm excited to go inside. You want to look for some treasures? Sure, let's go. Okay, great. Fire this baby up. <laughs> So Josephine, it's an honor to be here in this booth. I love some of your stuff. What's what are your what do you what's going on? Well, Lee, I think maybe some of the Mark Catesby prints here are, are something that I would 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 find interesting to folks. We've done very well with them here at the show. Very nice. Uh, the Kate species, these are two of the birds that are from the natural history of Carolina, Florida, and the Bahama Islands. Okay. They were done in London from 1731 to 1743, but Kate so spent a long time in America, yep. you know, out here with whoever was here in 1709, and you know, the oh, natives had, as you say, sometimes are restless, but <laughs> he was out there with, Wow. You know, the snakes, the birds, the fish, and the Indians and everybody else. And he stayed over here for about 10 years. And you can imagine being from London in 1709. And coming. And then going back to America, in like uh, to London from right. America in 1719. Wow. And then spending 10 years hand engraving copper plates of each and every one of his things himself. From the sketches that he did while he was here which in are the now West. in the Royal Collection at Windsor Castle. Wow. Um, That's really cool. Yeah, he's the, he's the guy. He's and the he guy. Is, he's the guy. Yeah, 100 I, I, years before Audubon, he has a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it, but a little MC right there yep, in the yep. plate. And That's from Mark Cates. Yep, the Cates right there. And this, of course, is the passenger pigeon, which is extinct now. Yep. Uh, a yep. really lovely uh, example with some, some oak leaves. And he tended to put the foliage in with the birds simply because he had such a scarcity of the copper was so expensive. He okay. wasn't going to waste you know, one plate for a leaf and one plate for a bird. So okay. he just came up with these wonderful wow. compositions yeah. of they're things. They're so strong and they're so, yeah, they're so beautifully colored. Yep, and I love the Kate's business. And of course, we, you know, go to maps from traveling. That's the S. Augustus Mitchell here. Yep. Uh, wall map in wonderful condition from 1845. And what's that priced at? Uh, that's at $4,500. Oh, that's quite... And it's, it's, uh, we've had it restored uh, to fresh linen and new, uh, the same original rollers, but it's all been put back together uh, with the fresh backing. I see that. It here. really looks nice. Nicely conserved. Probably that, as good a condition as, as anything you'll, you'll find. That's really, really nice. That's really nice. I mean, <clears throat> now it sounds really crazy, but... Uh, there's Pennsylvania, Ohio, of course it goes, this, and there's good old Texas, of course. Got a little, yep, got, yep. got, got like East it. Texas in there. Yeah, East Texas, right. I was going to say, just before it's lovely been. to have all the vignettes of all the different cities and yes. uh, ports and, yeah. you know, lakes, like Lake Pontchartrain yeah. and that kind of thing. Well, I think, so, what, what about down here? I'm looking at that beautiful... From Catesby and Matt to John James Audubon and his Birds of America, which is probably one of the most fabulous books ever produced, right. period, anywhere. Uh, Audubon, of course, I'm sure a lot of people know, but not everyone, that every bird he did, he did in its actual life size. Right. Right. Now, that, that meant he had to have a really large book. Right. He was going to have things like <laughs> flamingos, right. great blue herons, right. wild turkeys right. in their actual life size. And what Audubon was able to do was find an engraver and a printer in England that right. could actually make these huge copper plates and right. they would tint them with acid they call that aqua tinting right and okay. then they'd print them in black ink and yeah. then hand watercolor each and every one right right so this is uh, by, uh, by Havel and uh, around that's 1836 1836 that's uh, 6500 for a very nice Havel a very nice condition also it's uh, the, the, the colors are bright the colors are beautiful it's really, absolutely really lovely I mean uh, these are uh, they, these really pop in any room. I mean, look at this. These two. Uh, we're looking at early. This fella here. He's a Seminole chief to Cosimothala. Yep. And he and his buddy mm -hmm. Osceola over here are the two of the only. Uh, there, I think there are four standing chiefs. We happen to have all four, and we have the two a Sioux chief and a uh, an Ojibwe okay. over there. But these and are the two standing Seminole chiefs. They're probably two of the most popular. Uh, um, in the McKinney and Hall book, which is, of course, the history of the Indian tribes of North America by right. Thomas McKinney and right. James Hall. Wow. 
Yeah. You're, in a, you're an encyclopedia of knowledge. 1836 to wow. 1845. Wow. So, well, the Seminoles I, I, were the, the Florida were Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, they were never. Uh, they never signed a treaty. Yep. Uh, yep. The Seminoles are the only uh, ch tribe that I know of that yep. still have their own territorial lands that they never did leave. Uh, right. They, they yeah. fought a few wars with the U.S. Army, but they, they just, you know, either ran them off or, right. or they went off into the swamp down there and, and, and hid out until they had could come back out. But, but, and happily they did, and now they're yeah, yeah. taking re revenge on us by, by the, with, with having those wonderful casinos well, and there getting you everybody's go. money. That's <laughs> they're right. finally getting That's back. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. And I don't, I don't blame them, actually, for what's happened to them now with the U.S. No, but it's Hard to say. No, hard to say. I just say, I'm not saying anything. But the, Either uh, way. But hand coloring is really nice. The lithography on these was done by J.T. Bowen in Philadelphia, who also did the, Audubon's uh, quadruped series, the animal series. Yep. And, uh, I, just really high quality material. They, of course, print those lithographs from Bavarian limestone wow. in black ink, and then they hand watercolor each one and add a little bit of gum arabic varnish to each one I as guess. well. You, you, yeah, let me ask you, you know your stuff more than most people uh, that specialize in a certain area. You really know your stuff. So where, well, I think how I'm long doing okay, been... considering I just started three weeks ago. Uh, this is just my <laughs> very three... first show I've ever done. Yeah, you did yeah, yeah, a long whole time. Life. Been yeah, long when did time. you start? When did you start with that? Uh... Um, I started in about 1982, okay. I believe. 1982. So, and... um, I don't know how long ago that is, but it's been a minute for sure. <laughs> it's been you a do, minute for you, sure. You do your homework too, you know, and that's thing and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning so much I mean well, let and me what ask I you. find interesting about it Lee is just the fact that you can continue to learn you don't have to be bored yes exactly uh, yeah. we're now getting into 20th century material like this beautiful Samarkand uh, oriental composition series by Eugène Alain Segui yeah with they, a uh, yeah, yeah it's a nice little surface. cover there and there's 20 different uh, illustrations of different original compositions yep. and designs by him yep all printed in Paris in the in the 1920s. And a sketch, a sketch somebody's the having, 20s somebody's over, having a little fun over there with yeah, that one, aren't from they? From the 1920s car. That, on that's, the car nut. Yeah, no, cars, there so. you go. There you go. So, but your Samarkand or your or your uh -huh. Oriental designs, and they're yep. printed in the Pochoir method, which okay. allows you to put the color on by hand so you yep. can get rich, dense, metallic Look leaf that. and that kind of thing. Okay. But you also can keep all the little tiny delicate lines just perfect because yeah. they use a stencil. So that's what okay. the, the yeah. pochoir method Look means. That. In, ah. in French, it's, it's basically a stenciling technique. And this, the, now this, this, this uh, album here, did, this, uh, do you sell well, them separately? We we'll sell these separately. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, we, great. We um, Got it. put these in for framing. They look really beautiful. Okay. Um, Wonderful. And people are just really gravitating towards all this type of material, like the <laughs> insects over there by yeah, Segui. I, I saw those. Uh, I mean, they No, come out of what? The insects right here, right? Oh, these, these are very cool. What, what those date from when? These are 1920s as well. Oh, so these are the Segui insects. Wow, same beautiful, guy. beautiful. And his his okay. his idea was to create okay. imagery that from nature or from like ch other cicada, types of cicada. I always mm -hmm. say it wrong. Yeah. Okay. Motifs wow. that would a big inspire bug. people to. Um, Create Man. all kinds of design. That could be a cool NFT and uh, sell for a, for a, sell for a fortune. And there you, you go. Just tell your own uh, NFT from the easy what easy. E A Segui. E, e. e. A Segui. Uh, Paris. Uh, he was an entomologist as well as a designer. Right. Taught classes and, and created portfolios for people to use for textile design, fabric design, carpet design. Wallpaper right. design for architects and right. interior designers, anyone who might want to use color or motif wow. or imagery or natural history or whatever else Got to it. create beautiful things. Well, Josephine, thank you very much. My we pleasure, really Lee. So it. kind of y'all to come and visit. I really appreciate it and look forward to working with y'all on Ruby Lane. It'll just be an exciting time for us. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Ruby Lane and for tuning in to this special series filmed in partnership with The Big Red Barn and Roundtop by Paper City. Stay tuned for all the exciting features and events. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe.